I don't have a lot of time to film this video, but I wanted to share with you a dream that I had about my late husband last night. It's kind of cruel in a ironic kind of way. Um, what it was is, in my dream, I was talking to him and he was alive and he was normal and healthy and almost as if like nothing happened to him. I was hugging him and it was very vivid. I could feel the body warmth and I could feel the texture of his skin. And I was telling him that he wasn't going to disappear because in other dreams that I have of him, and I've had a lot, and when I wake up, I know that he's gone. So in this dream, it was different because I had seen him earlier in my dream, and then I guess I had fallen asleep in my dream, and he hadn't disappeared, and so I really believed that I really believed in my dream that he was alive and it hurts so much because in the dream when you're hugging them and you can feel the warmth and from their skin and their body and it just seems so real You know, um, I loved having dreams of him because that was the only way I would get to see him. Uh, I think about four months ago, there was a phase where I had a dream about him almost every night. <sighs> Actually, I think it was before four months. I think it was like just before I did that video of what I had learned during my grieving process and my experiences during the grieving process and um, during that phase where I was dreaming about him every night practically I I was okay I was like the best I had ever been because it felt like I was seeing him every night I like to think that he was actually connecting with me through my dreams and uh, I can't know for sure if that is real or not. Maybe they're just dreams but I like to believe that because if you don't know, you can't disprove it, you know, so I chose to believe that. But then the dreams weren't nearly as frequent anymore, and for months they haven't been as frequent. So, back to that dream. I believe that he was really alive, and... uh I told him, you know, I said, do you want to know what happened to you? Because he, you know, didn't seem to know what, what happened. And my brain in this dream was trying to understand how he could still be alive. And I thought, well, okay, maybe we put him in the crypt and he was still alive in the coffin but then I thought well no wait a minute I saw them seal it up you guys saw them seal it up so I thought in the dream again this is all in the dream how can it be that he had enough air in there the the coffin is airtight so I made up this fantastical story in my head to explain why he was still alive 
and I thought that it must have been that because when he was in the hospital and they gave up working on him that moment when the doctor said I'm gonna call it just before he said he was going to call it he explained that his heart was just fluttering and what that means is his heart wasn't pumping the blood around to get to his brain and his organs his vital organs and it was just like quivering So since in reality I had not seen his heart actually flatline, the reasoning my brain was trying to come up with was that um, after he was laying there, um, and we had to leave the hospital they would have moved him to another room for a while until they could put him in the morgue and during those few hours the medicines that they gave him to try and start his heart in reality the doctor told me that they had given him every medication to try and start his heart and they had run out of things to do so my fantastical story I hope this isn't getting too confusing here was that his heart started beating again from all of these medications they had given him and he got up and he left. And found his way back to us after a few weeks. Remember this is in the dream. <laughs> so, like I said, I was convinced in the dream that it wasn't a dream. And I can still remember the way it felt hugging him and the feel of his skin and the warmth of his body. I remember running my hand down and around. And it's just so unintentionally cruel. Like, when you wake up I know you can understand But it means so much to me that you have listened and cared and have been so comforting to me. You know, I'm pretty strong, but I get moments where I feel depressed there are only moments just because my kids are a big distraction for me there's a lot to do you know they keep me busy I think that this has only been 
the first year and I can't imagine going through like 40 more years without him. You know, I, I have a close relationship with our children, but of course it's not the same relationship I had with my husband. He understood me very well. And even just like talking about little things with him, you know, ordering something in the mail, you know, that I might be excited about receiving and he would be excited for me just because he loved me and because it mattered to me, it mattered to him, you know? I know that when I talk to my kids, they don't particularly care about items I order in the mail for me. I, you know, my teenage boys, they're the oldest, they don't care if I, if I order, I don't know, like skincare or, or a new diaper bag or anything, any of this kind of, you know, mom stuff. And I can understand that, you know, but any enjoyment or that I received, my husband would get that enjoyment too. So another little note that I want to add about that dream that I had. Um, if it seems very unrealistic that he would just get up and walk out of the hospital, you don't know my husband. Uh, a few years ago, he was in the hospital and he had these kind of electric, what are they called? Those pads that they hook wires to and it sticks to your skin. I can't think of the name right now, but um, they were monitoring him and it was a test and it was going on for, I don't know, at least an hour. I think they were supposed to monitor him for a few hours. And um, he hadn't seen a nurse in probably an hour or so. So he got tired of waiting there. He was bored and he just took them all off and left the hospital and came home. And I said, well, what are you doing home? Why did you do that? You know, you shouldn't have done that. He said, well, I was bored, you know, no one had seen me in an hour or so. And he, I guess he didn't think he needed that test anyway. Um, he was quite an individual. And this might sound cliche, but there was nobody like him in this world. I had received a question from somebody and uh, they asked me if I was ever going to get married again because I'm, you know, still got like half of my life left. I'm basing this on my grandma. My grandma died at 82. So I live in a country where we have, you know, modern health care. And the answer is no. I don't believe that there is, well, I, I know. Nobody is going to understand me the way my husband did. And that's 
one of the reasons why I married him. You know, it, I wasn't young and dumb in spite of what people might think. I do have so much more to share with you. It's not all sad. But I'd like to, again, thank you once more. It'll probably not be the last that I ever thank you because it has meant so much to me. The kindness, the caring, the wonderful people. You know, you didn't have to watch, you didn't have to listen, you didn't have to leave positive comments, you didn't have to do any of that. My heart is touched. Thank you. I'll see you again. Goodbye.